The first quote is from the historian Henry Adams, who said, quote, there are grave doubts at the hugeness of the land and whether one government can comprehend the whole. Now you have to understand he didn't use comprehend in the sense of, of to understand, he used it in the sense of to contain or to hold together. So in other words, way back in 1861, that's when he said this, when there were only 31 million of us living in 34 states, there were already questions about whether or not this country was too big, too vast, and too filled with too many different kinds of people for one government to hold it together. For the record and for comparison, there are now 325 million of us spread across 50 states. And that brings me to the second quote. It is from Abraham Lincoln, who said, quote, from whence shall we expect the approach of danger? Shall some transatlantic military giant step the earth and crush us at a blow? Never. All the armies of Europe and Asia could not by force take a drink from the Ohio River or make a track on the Blue Ridge in the trial of a thousand years. No, if destruction be our lot, we must ourselves be its author and finisher. As a nation of free men, we will live forever or die by suicide. Lincoln said that in 1858, and of course three years later, the nation did in fact try suicide erupting in a devastating civil war that killed upwards of 600,000 people. There are those of us who would say that we are trying suicide again as we navigate an era of political division that is deeper, more bitter, and more pronounced than anything we have seen since the 1850s. Indeed, it's interesting to me, the latest issue of Intelligence Report which is the magazine of the Southern Poverty Law Center, has an article documenting a number of new secession movements. We're talking about extremists who are hell-bent on prying off the Southeast, the Northwest, and one group just wants the top half of California, <laughs> as a new home for their, for their extremist ideologies. And it should tell you something that these latest attempts at national suicide stem from fundamentally the same source as our original attempt at, at, at national suicide, meaning hatred of the other, conviction that the other represents a lesser subspecies of human being. Sometimes we define otherness by religion, by gender identity, by sexuality, or by faith. And of course, we have always and forever defined it by race. The tension between Henry Adams's question and Abraham Lincoln's answer, between the historian's doubt and the future president's implicit faith, has never abated. It has, on the, on, on the contrary, undergirded this country for over a century and a half and counting. We have never come close to answering the question or validating the faith for all the lip service that we have paid to both. We wax poetic about how much we love our country and our freedom. We pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. We invoke liberty and justice as if we invented them. And if it were possible that mere words could, as Langston Hughes once put it, make America be, then we would be in lovely shape. But they cannot, and we are not. Indeed, we are in the exact opposite of lovely shape. And the worst thing about it, I think, is that our primary problem is not our economy, it is not our foreign relations, it is not our crime rate. Our biggest problem at this juncture in our history is us.